Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brad Markle. I'm here today with In Motion Hosting. Uh, one of the other hosting providers you, get, you guys may have seen around. There's uh, SiteGround is out there, and uh, who are the Arbix? others? Arbix, other hosting company that's out here. So, uh, so far it's been interesting for me to kind of meet some of the competitors, some of those guys that <coughs> I see on Google that I'm trying to beat on Google. And so it's it's nice coming here and pass some smiles their way. But and uh, in today's presentation, I'm going to cover a couple things. We're going to take a quick look at SEO. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what SEO is and kind of understand why it's important. But we'll take a quick look at that. I'll show you guys general SEO using Joomla. Like I said, it's not terribly difficult. You just have to understand what exactly you're doing and why you're doing it. And then I'll also give you guys some tips and suggestions. Um, from my point of view, I help manage the sports center for our hosting company. We've got two, 3,000 articles in there. And so it's, it's a bit different for me because I've got a lot of content to kind of QA and make sure it's SEO kind of friendly. So I'll, I'll give you guys some tips on, on kind of some of the things that, that I automate. And even if you don't want to have 1,000 pages, even if 50, 20, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you can automate, and uh, I would highly suggest doing that. Okay, so again, quick introduction. I've been in the hosting industry since 2006. I started out at a small kind of Windows hosting company, and then I just hit my five-year mark at InMotion Hosting. I've done a tier one, so I've picked up the phones, responded to emails, and done tier two. I've done systems, done training, and now I do the, uh, what we refer to as the customer community, so we write a lot of the score articles. So I've got, I'm kind of, kind of always on the other end from you guys. I, mean, I design websites here and there, but I'm always interacting with people who run Joomla sites, run WordPress sites, so I've got a lot of background in this stuff. Um, I've also seen Joomla grow over the years. Saw it in 2006, and then it's one of those things as the years go on, you get a lot of phone calls, and it just picks up. You start hearing that a lot of people are using Joomla. So um, I've, I've definitely watched Joomla over the years kind of grow to what it is today. And uh, I guess a bit of, a bit of credibility. Um, I'm sure there's other sites getting a lot more, but yeah, so our support center, we've got over... Uh, we get over 200,000 hits a month from Google on it. So for me, that's, uh, that's I love that. <laughs> we launched this new support center last year. The first week or so, we were getting 5,000 a month. And then it just kind of slowly you know, went up from there. So hopefully I can come back next year, tell you guys we're getting a million hits a month. Or, you know, but, um, so we're not doing uh, too bad. Oops. Okay. So I, I was kind of talking about this earlier, you know, who is this presentation for? If you look up there, you know, it says SEO marketing. <laughs> what? I, 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 yeah, I do SEO, but I'm a, I'm a programmer at heart. Started back in junior high when we got those calculators, you know, I, and putting like Pac-Man and stuff on there. So I prefer to be up all night coding. So this SEO, this marketing type stuff, isn't what I do naturally, but no matter who you are, um, it's it's important. It's you don't need to do SEO full time, but you got to understand, you know, the basic points. Um, you know, we probably got some extension developers here. Um, you know, website developers create websites for clients, and even Joomla.org team members. You know, if you're an extension developer, you want to make sure that your website that's touting your component, you want to make sure that people can find it. You know, that'll lead into more sales. Website developers, you know, again, you don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but if, if that's another kind of upsell, you know, for your clients, SEO, you know, a bit of extra money there. And with Joomla.org, again, uh, you know, there's lots of people searching for documentation, so they got to make sure that they have it and everyone, everyone can easily find it. So the whole SEO is, is it's very important. So what is SEO? It's, it's search engine optimization. Um, you know, it's basically cleaning up your site so you can be found in Google. 
Now, I'm going to reference Google a lot, but Yahoo being the other search engines. And there, there's quite a few things you have to consider. Um, you have to consider how search engines work. You have to consider what people are actually searching for, what, what words they're typing in, and again, what search engines are, uh, are being used. So we'll, we'll tackle most of this today. Um, so as far as how search engines work, you know, I've got, it's a lot of theory. I've got ideas. I don't work at Google, so I don't know the ins and outs, but how many people here, let's, let's say if someone walked in the door, was like, hey Brad, how do I, how do I install Joomla on localhost? Okay, how many people here, raise a hands, know how to install Joomla on a localhost? Okay, so we've got about 15, 20 people. So I can't have them go talk to all you guys. <laughs> all right, so the next thing I'm gonna say is, um, who's been working with Joomla the longest? Anyone been working since 2006 with Joomla? All right, so I got a couple more. So maybe one more question is, uh, I got all these people, they know how to install Joomla locally. They've been working with Joomla for quite a while. Uh, maybe I kind of take a look at how professional everyone looks. Um, you know, I'd say, hey, that guy looks credible. You know, go talk to him first. But if he, if he can't help you, you know, maybe try the guy next to him. And that's, that's kind of what, you know, search engines do. They got um, people send in their queries and they've got tons of indexed content, and so they have to find you know, the best results. So that's that's what, what they do. Now, it's, it's very important to understand what people are searching for. For example, the question was, who knows how to install Joomla on a local host? But uh, they may have asked, how do I install Joomla on cPanel? How do I install Joomla on Ubuntu or Linux or you know all sorts of different phrases that they all kind of mean the same thing but you have to know what they are searching for specifically and tailor um, your content to that <coughs> so again the ultimate goal of SEO is to rank higher in the search engines you know get on that first page first second third result um, you know the more eyeballs to your page the more people that click that's what we want them to do is click you know, if you're selling products, you could sell more products. Um, if you do advertising, you know, more people are going to your page seeing those advertising, so a bit more money there. And uh, not entirely, but in my case, I like to, uh, I like people to see the InMotion hosting brand, get that branding effect. I don't expect someone to search for something, read my article, and sign up right away. You know, that's, that's not gonna happen, let's get serious. But, but in a year from now, uh, you know, if they use Joomla and they've seen the tutorials that I've written and they know in motion hosting, people switch hosting companies all the time. So one of the goals is to really get in motion hosting out there um, so that when you do decide to switch hosting companies, you know, it rings a bell. It's like, hey, I know that guy. I've read his stuff. And, uh, and you know, that probably applies for a lot of companies out there, whether you design websites for somebody or you, you know, develop components. Uh, branding is pretty important. So we're going to take a look at some basic stuff here. Like I said, the theory is is really what's important. Has anyone seen that picture before? A couple people. All right. So that's that's basically what I do most of the time is I use Joomla to write about Joomla, write Joomla tutorials, and um, there's a in SEO. There's a ton of factors involved. If you do your research, Google, you know, it's like, hey, there's 200 factors that that uh, that will help get higher up in the search results. And if you start thinking like that, it's like, okay, I got to figure out 200 things. It's going to keep you up at night, and it's not the way to go. Not only are there 200 plus factors, whether how long you've been using Joomla, how professional your site looks, you know, there's 200. They change. So as soon as you think you've got it figured out, you know, they're going to change their algorithm. And you're going to be not back to square one, but you're going to be pushed back down. So the biggest thing I'm trying to convey today is, is the essentials. There's just some essential things that you need to do that you need to be aware of. You don't have to be aware of all, you know, 200 plus ranking factors. 
So what we're looking at right now, how to install Joomla 3.0. Um, again, search results kind of vary depending on where you search from um, or some other various settings. But uh, I, most of the time I've been ranking for number one for that. And so we get a lot of traffic for that. And so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the page titles. And that is the page title right there, how to install Joomla 3.0. So you'll notice that's that's basically the article title, and then the and then uh, the brand name after that. Um, nothing real difficult. The page title is kind of like the the title of your book. You know, it's very important. I was trying to think of a a good analogy and didn't really find one. But there's how many of you guys are familiar with a movie called The Truth About Cats and Dogs? All right, it's like a romantic comedy. The movie has nothing to do about cats and dogs. So when you're doing SEO, um, you want to be explicit. You know, this is what people are searching for, how to install Joomla 3.0. Um, so that's what I'm going to give them. I'm not going to give them some creative title, you know, the best Wednesday of my life installing Joomla. You know, <laughs> get straight to it. Figure out what people are searching for and give it to them. And again, for the title, you know, it's the, the title tag in your header. And when you're working within Joomla, you know, most of the time it's going to be your, uh, your article title. Again, that's <laughs> you got to understand the theory, what you're doing and, and why you're doing it. But again, that's your, uh, that's your title. Most of the time, actually I'll say all the time, in my experience, the title and your article is always going to show us the title in, uh, in the Google search results. You may have noticed, too, that we always have InMotion Hosting appended to the end of the uh, title. So if you're using Joomla, which I assume you guys are, you go to the global configuration, and it's just one of the site settings. So you got to put in your site name, and then you've also got include site name and page titles. And that's, that's good for branding. People see your company name up there. And sometimes, excuse me, in our case, in motion hosting, we've got that word hosting in there. And sometimes it, it's not, not too big, but it can have a little, little impact. It can be, can be beneficial. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is the meta descriptions. And a meta description, most of the time, well, that's basically the, the meta description. That's going to show up underneath your search result. And whereas the page title is really important, the meta description <coughs> is not really that important for SEO. It's important because it's kind of like your billboard. You, you have only so much room there, and when people are just kind of scanning through the, uh, the results, you know, this is your chance to say, hey, this is what my article's about. This is what you're going to learn, or you know, whatever message you want to you want to put in there. And again, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. In this tutorial, we will walk you through the steps and how to install Joomla 3.0. You know exactly what the article is going to be about. I've got a couple examples later that I'll show you that don't really do a good job, but it seems pretty straightforward until you see some that you know are not ideal. Uh, again, meta description, you know, for me, easy stuff, uh, goes up in the, in the header, and you don't do any of that manually with, uh, you know, with Joomla. So here's your meta description when you're working with your article. It's in the metadata options, and so you go ahead and fill it out, save it, you're good to go. Um, one thing to consider is here are two different searches. How to install Joomla 3.0 and Joomla 3.0 installation uh, steps. Notice that same exact title, same exact you know, yep, URL and picture, but this is different. The, the description down there is different. So Google is not always going to grab your meta description and put it in there. So you want to assume it will, but it doesn't always do that. And, and really, Google's trying to kind of show you why it, it's showing this page. And I'll, hopefully the example will make a bit more sense. 
So how to install Joomla? That's what I searched for, and it found on the page where it referenced this tutorial will show you how to install Joomla. Um, but in the next query, it says Joomla 3.0 installation steps. So it changed up the description here, and it basically found this is this was actually the the meta description, and so it grabbed that instead because it included the word installation steps. So again, just another thing to consider. You know, if you don't see your meta description showing up, don't don't freak out. Google is is on that. Uh, the next thing we'll take a look at is URLs. Again, sometimes, not everyone's the same, but on the internet there's a lot of scanning going or involved. You know, people don't have the time to put a lot of focus on everything and sometimes they're just going to scan and uh, browse. So here's the URL right there. And if you see right there in the URL, it ends with install Joomla 3. <coughs> um, just based upon that, you get a good idea that that's what the article is about. And most of the time, uh, when you're working with Joomla, if you don't specify what you want that URL to be, it's just going to grab your title and kind of crunch that in there and turn it into part of the, the URL. But um, what you can do is you can actually use that to your advantage because like you've seen, there's more than one way that people can search for how to install Joomla 3.0. Uh, or anything really. So you can use the title to target one phrase. You can use, excuse me, the, the URL to target a different phrase. Uh, again, very related phrases, but this is just another way to kind of target that with the, uh, with the URL there. Also, this is the best example. When you see, they kind of cut some stuff out. Um, smaller URLs are kind of easier to, to scan visually. For example, here's like, it should say Joomla getting started, install Joomla 3. When you see that, you, hopefully you understand that the article is all about getting started with the Joomla. And if you delete install Joomla, it's going to bring you to the getting started page with all, all sorts of other information with getting started with Joomla. But uh, So not only do you want to have it very descriptive, very straight to the point, but you want to keep it short. Shorter is typically better. And again, uh, I'll try to stop saying that, but it's, it's not very difficult, you know. In this case, if you're working with an article, you just go to publishing options and uh, set your alias in there. And that's, that's kind of how you're uh, building the URL to that page. Good question with that? Yes. Uh, a lot of times, is it a good practice for Joomla to use a different alias for what your title may be? Um, that's a very good question. And with a lot of, uh, I don't know if you guys have a lot of questions, but a lot of it is kind of testing and, and seeing what works for you. Uh, for example, I don't, I don't have any rock solid testing to show you that works. And it's kind of hard to prove it when you've got 200 factors that kind of play a role. You know, it, it could be that, that change that you did, the different title and the different alias. Or it could have been, you know, something else that you're not even aware of. Um, so, really, what I would recommend is just testing. I mean, either way, you're. It's a good thing to either replicate that. Now, if your title is very long, you know, shorten it up, get the keywords in there, um, or you can target kind of different keywords. But it's, it's for me, it's kind of hard to give rock solid answers on a lot of this stuff. Like I said, I'm not, Got a programming background, so in programming, it works or it doesn't. Fix it, you know, you're good to go. With <laughs> SEO, it's it's a bit different. So like like I said, a big part of it is just kind of understanding the theories involved. So just make sure you use that alias to target something. Don't don't waste it. Um, also, we'll take a quick look at header tags. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with header tags, H1s, H2s. Um, my personal belief is this is kind of why, well, it's a, it's a good reason why Wikipedia is always showing up first. Um, you know, because you got the table of contents up at the top of the article, and those are header tags, or they're anchor links to the header tags. And so that the header tags are kind of like the title tag. You know, they're not as important as the title, which kind of defines the whole page, 
But when you've got a ton of content in there, the headers um, say, hey, this next group of content is about X, Y, and Z. So uh, if you've got pages that have a lot of text on them, not only for usability, do you want to use headers to allow people to visually just kind of look and see what the page is about, but there are some uh, SEO factors involved with the header tags. And if we, if we take a quick look at this one, you know, the, the H1, this is what the whole thing is about. How to install Joomla 3.0. Um, you know, then the next subset is Joomla 3.0 requirements. And then when we get to the Joomla installation steps, we've got some H3s after that. Um, also, like I said, you have to know what people are searching for and target it uh, wherever you can. The article was how to install Joomla 3.0, but what if someone searches for Joomla 3.0 installation steps? You know, so wherever you can, try to squeeze in that, that good stuff there, because um, that's what Google does. It, Google doesn't technically know this page is about installing Joomla 3.0. It just knows it's about that, you know, that text right there. Can I ask you a question? Uh, yeah. Says written by the article. Are you using Google Plus integration, or is it just correct? Okay. Yeah, we've got uh, the Google Plus integration, <coughs> and uh, so that's why you guys see the my profile picture show up in the search results. All right, again, the heading. You know, highlight your text in the editor. Uh, choose your heading. Um, this is the default editor. I don't know how many of you actually use the JCE. Editor. I mean, it's, yeah, I use it. Yeah, so uh, again, this may not be the exact thing in JCE, but uh, I'm sure you guys can figure that one out. The next one we're going to take a look at is anchor text. Um, you know, anchor text is, so that's a link, obviously, and um, anchor <coughs> text is the actual text that people <coughs> click on, you know, to go to that page. And anchor text is important because it helps Google understand the page that links to what it's about. For example, <laughs> not the best example, but that, that page, that link goes to another page about install Joomla 3.0. And so the more that Google sees these backlinks with very similar text, you know, it, it, it kind of understands that. A lot of people are linking to this page, and it's about installing Joomla 3, or it's about uh, Joomla installation steps. So um, when you're using the anchor text, you want to make sure that you're targeting your keywords. It's a whole different conversation, but you want to make sure you don't repeat the same keywords over and over. You could get penalized. Um, but again, uh, that's a <coughs> whole different conversation. Um, in this example, we're actually going to take a look at one of our competitors, SiteGround. Um, they're, I think, one of the main sponsors here today. And it, the example I've been showing you guys is how to install Joomla 3. So in this case, how to install Joomla 2.5. And I believe they were the first position on there. And again, we're talking about anchor text. So what you can do is... Go ahead and grab the URL to that page, and uh, you know just type in link colon URL to the page. And what that's going to do is Google is going to return back all of the, the pages that it has indexed that link to that page. So again, we're talking about anchor text. So we can take a look at, and you can do this too. Take a look at what your competitors are doing. Um, in this case. So we've got the two pages that SiteGround, okay. So we've got two SiteGround pages that link back to their own page. And so there's nothing wrong with that. You want to make sure that um, even if it's your own content, you have some of it linking. Um, but what I'm trying to get at, here's, here's what I'm trying to get at. And when I was doing kind of research, you know, I saw this and I was like, Great job, you know. Like I wish I did it first, but um, you know, th this is their anchor text: How to install Joomla 2.5, and Joomla 2.5 
manual installation. It, it seems very natural the way it is. You know, it's kind of hard to tell if, if there's some people over there really thinking about what they're doing or if this is just kind of naturally what they did. But again, the anchor text, you've got two different sets of anchor text that Google crawls. And so it helps Google understand that this page is about installing Joomla or manual installation steps. So make sure you get some thought as to what anchor text you're using. Um, images, we'll touch base on it quickly. Um, specifically the alt text, if you have an image that's actually a link to somewhere else, the alt text, uh, Google treats that as the anchor text for the image. So if you have, again, links going to other pages, you want to fine tune your alt text because it could be just as important as anchor text. And in the Joomla editor, yeah, it's just the, the uh, image description. So again, kind of pay attention to what exact text you're using because it, it, honestly, it, it can be very important. How repetitive can you be with anchor text on a single page? Um, I mean, how much anchor text from different pages that point to that one? No, just the same verbiage. Is there any, do you, any penalty on SEO? Um, very good question. I, I, I wish I knew it. Um, I mean, one of the, what you want to do is you want to make sure you, you kind of mix it up. Um, for example, there was a, a, a recent kind of update to Google. And if they saw, if Google saw a ton of sites all linking to you with the same anchor text, for example, maybe like in a footer, like if you've got a template, if there's any template developers out here and you've got a link in your footer, you got 100 people using that template and they all have the same anchor text, um, you can get penalized for that. Um, so I don't have any exact numbers, but it's kind of just something you want to be aware of. Um, so personally, I try to vary it up as much as possible. I mean, there's, I can sit here for an hour and spit out ways for how to install Joomla, Joomla installation steps. Like there's so many different, uh, you know, ways you could say it. And Google, kind of knows that install, installation, installed, you know, all those variations, they kind of mean the same thing. So um, personally, I would just suggest to kind of vary it up. You don't want to use the same anchor text over and over. So uh, about 10 minutes left. I just to answer that, Matt Cutts of Google put up a video on that exact question, and it said it was just a devaluation of it. So, you know, you use it a few times and then you know, on, on a curve, and the more you use it, just the less important it becomes, it kind of plateaus. So it's not necessarily a penalty, it's just not as important the more you have it. Is, is anyone, does anyone besides you know who Matt Cutts is? All right, so if, if this stuff really interests you and, and you want to place a lot of importance in it, you know, I, I suggest uh, kind, of, kind of following what Matt Cutts talks about um, I think he works at the web spam portion of, of Google, so really they're working on penalizing sites that are putting garbage out there. So pay attention to what he says and uh, you know, make sure you're not doing anything bad. What was his name again? Uh, Matt Cutts. <laughs> right, if it so, feels bad, it's bad. Yeah. yeah. Yep. If it feels bad, you've gone too far. And if you feel like you're going to devaluate, like he says, then create another one because you can create one that adds lots of value instead of creating one that adds. Yeah. And there, there, when you start looking at analytics, like if you take a look at Google Analytics, you'll see that not everyone types in the same words to get to your, your articles or when they find them on Google. So there's a lot you can do. Um, so again, i got about 10 minutes, so I'll try to wrap everything up here. Um, this is not really a formula per se, but if you're trying to get a lot of traffic, you need, to be under, you need to be aware of this. You need to be aware of volume and competition. And so we'll take a look at volume first. How many people are searching for this topic? For example, let's say, you know, I work in web hosting, so 
how to install WordPress, for example, right? Lots and lots and lots of people are typing that phrase, how to install WordPress. So if you're trying to get traffic, you want to go, you know, that's one way of doing it is targeting what people are searching for. You got to know that. Uh, but then you got to take a look at the competition. Tons of people have articles online how to install WordPress. So don't really think you're going to write an article and have it show up on the first page because there's a lot of competition out there. So um, kind of keep that in mind. If you're not getting traffic that you're expecting, you know, kind of take a look at are there a lot of other people doing the same thing, which is kind of like a, you want to find a niche. Or did you find something that just no one is searching for? And you could, you can answer these questions. So finding what to write about. Um, hopefully some of you are, are aware of it, and it's not like a big secret here. But you know, the Google auto suggests. Let's say you're a Joomla developer. You know Joomla really well. You know the Joomla API. You know Joomla Facebook. So you've got the auto suggest, and it's basically Google trying to tell you, you know, I think this is what you're going to say. Because they know that a lot of people are typing Joomla Facebook, like, feed, like button. So you could use the auto suggest to kind of figure out, you know, what people are searching for. And this is something I do. Um, I prefer it as just the A through Z list, but Joomla Facebook A. B, C, D. Um, automate this. If, well, it, it can be automated. So if you find this to work for you, look into automating it. But so that's the first thing is you know you got this uh, this thing that you know a lot about. Okay, figure out what people are searching for. Um, if you're not familiar with it, Google has the keyword the Google uh, keyword tool. It's really more for uh, like AdWords, but you don't have to use it for AdWords. So you plug in all of the search phrases, and it tells you the phrase, and if you look at the middle column, global monthly searches. So obviously you don't have these three search phrases up here all getting 4,400 hits or searches a month. What are the odds of that? But it gives you a ballpark figure. Um, for example, Joomla Facebook activity feed, roughly 73 people a month are searching for that, whereas 4,400 are searching for Joomla Facebook button. So this is good information to know, um, <coughs> partly because it shows you where to uh, where to go. You know, for example, Joomla Facebook button has got the most searches, so let me write a component or a, you know extension for that. Whereas, I mean. Sure, go ahead and target this one if you want, but just you may not want to put so much effort into it because there's only 73 searches. What do you think about using Google AdWords to actually come up with the best terms to run? What we've done in the past for marketing, we would run a Google campaign, AdWords, pick all the suggested keywords, and then get data actually how much traffic each one got, how many, how many times it was exposed, because this will not give you that. Yeah, are you talking, I think there's an option, if you're familiar with this page, there's an option above it to show related words. Is that what you're uh, No, we'll do, I will go ahead and set up a pay, pay click and paint. Okay. I uh, will set my, you know, bid up to 30 bucks for the keyword. Uh, and then I would choose all the suggestions for, let's say, Joomla Facebook. Choose all of them, put them all in a campaign, and then let it run for like 10 days. Uh, the only thing I would make sure is that my description inside the ad is not relative to the actual search to prevent people from clicking it. <laughs> so that will give you so that will give you actual data of how many what keywords gave you most exposures, what the cost per click would be, and then you can actually go back and use it for your SEO because now you know exactly based on your geographic area, exactly how many searches you got that month. Because these are averages and based on how you use the term and you put your geographic area or not, this could be very skewed. Yeah, then, uh, I don't I don't personally do it much with the uh, with the campaigns but that I mean that sounds like a really good idea too you know just kind of seeing what's what's coming through <laughs> well I don't want to tell everybody with you guys you know I, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, know. Post it. I get a lot of help here so what is that okay so we got about four <laughs> minutes left uh, so I'll try to wrap it up 
But uh, the key is knowing what people are searching for, like Joomla Facebook components. Um, all right, that's, that's pretty high in the list. I don't have the whole A through Z list here. But take a look at Joomla Facebook component, do a Google search on it, and take a look at some of the things we talked about earlier. Take a look at the titles. This is the top five. Do any of them say Joomla Facebook component? You know, so me looking at this, this is, I would say it's too, okay. So there's opportunity here if you want to target this from an SEO point of view. If people are searching for a Joomla Facebook component, there's not a page title that has it in there, that's a big part of your SEO is the page title, so you may try to squeeze in there. Um, Facebook integration seems to be what people are using. You know, you want to take a look at how much volume is there, how many people are actually searching for it. But also, you know, like take a look at the URL. Let's say I'm an average user and I'm looking for a Joomla Facebook component. <coughs> that does not tell me anything. JFB Connect. Like me, if I'm scanning the results, you know, I don't, I don't know what that means. So if you've got a Joomla Facebook component that does, you know, the authentication, you may want to have that word Joomla Facebook authentication or something in the URL so that if people are kind of visually scanning over it, you know, they're going to know what it's about. Um, how well are you doing? You want to make sure you use Google Analytics. It's, it's really an industry standard. Um, you know, working in the hosting industry, there's all sorts of other things out there. Anyone familiar with AW Stats? <coughs> Hopefully no one uses that. You know, <laughs> Google Analytics, again, it's an industry standard. There's so much you could do with it. So I'm, I'm actually going to skip over that section um, just to uh, show you guys some quick tips in the next two minutes. So again, you know, I got a sports center. I help run, manage a team, two, three thousand articles in there and growing. So if you got a large website, you know, how do you effectively monitor it? Um, you know, for me, I got to take a look at what my team is doing, how much traffic they're getting in. You also want to take a look at kind of like a QA portion on your site, for example, and automate what you can, kind of getting back to Joomla here. Uh, like I said, I, I feel like I'm a developer at heart, and so I understand how the Joomla database API works, so I'm always calling it to, to grab information. Um, if you've got a team of people writing for you, there's custom variables you can set up in Google Analytics. Does, does that look familiar to everyone? You know the Google Analytics code? You can, flat, you can add flags in there. For example, that's an author of mine, Arnell. And so after a while, you can have Google take care of logging how many hits I've got, Christy got, Arnell got. Um, so if you're trying to monitor your team's work, you know, take a look at adding some, some custom variables in there. And this is the last thing I'll present. But again, QAing your site using the, uh, you know, the database API. So it's important, links are important. Anchor text, all that stuff, it's important. And this is a quick set of code that will show you what pages on your site have no links in them. Because that's potential. If you've got a page with no links, you're, you're kind of wasting the page. And so you want to get com uh, comfortable with kind of how Joomla stores the information. But really, and I don't know how up to date this is, don't tell anyone, I still use Joomla 1.5. I'm not sure if anything's changed. Uh, but you know, we're grabbing everything from content. Uh, we're looking at the intro text, and again, a, a typical link is has a href in it. So, very simple query. Go ahead and set up the query, grab the results, and you could be much more sophisticated in the way you print it out. But we're just using pre and uh, print r with that variable. And um, I wish it was this clean, but uh, I kind of. Kind of lying to you guys here, I got more than 13 pages that don't have any links in them. But, you know, automate what you can. Automate, <coughs> figure out what's important to you as far as SEO and figure out a way to automate and check for it. So here, I've got 13 <coughs> pages that don't have links in it. So I can task my, my team with, you know, getting some links in there. For example, it's all about FTP. 
you know, we want to make sure we link over to our getting started guide for FTP, just as an example. And I'm actually over time. Some last things, some ideas for you. Spell check. Having misspelled words, it's kind of having like a big stain on your shirt. Um, there's like spell check APIs. You can loop through all 3,000 articles, find which ones have spelling mistakes, get them cleaned up. If you're taking a look at a specific page, like how to install Joomla 3.0, you know, I got all these people uh, writing content. You could scan the database and uh, you could find out what anchor text your staff is using to link over to that. So, you know, focus on your really important pages. But uh, again, SEO, it's, it's very uh, using Joomla, put in your page title, your alias, you know, simple stuff. But you got to understand the theory behind it, um, which is the hard part. And then, um, you know, be creative as far as how you're scanning your own site and, and making sure your stuff is good. So I hope you guys uh, learned something today. And thank you.